The outcome of the PDP convention is our focus this morning. Let's quickly move into that. And let's start from Abuja with Magwe. Well, thank you, Gimba. Joining us right now to discuss and shed a bit more light on what transpired over the weekend is the Chairman National Caretaker Committee of the People's Democratic Party, Senator Ahmed Makarfi. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you. Is there still a National Caretaker Committee? No. So it's been dissolved? Yeah, it was dissolved before election started. So right now you're an ordinary member of the PDP? Not ordinary. I was a BOT member, board of trustee member. I still remain a board of trustee member. Okay. So we heard there um, the newly elected chairman, Prince Uche Sekundo, saying that by this uh, you know, convention they now serve the APC a quick notice. Uh, but then there'll be questions as to whether or not the PDP has been able to cross the first major hurdle of organizing a convention that will carry everybody along with it in its quest to wrest power from the APC? Well, you know, no convention is without, you uh, know, winners and losers and, you know, some fallouts as a result of convention. Anticipating that, when we're inaugurating the main convention and sub-convention committees, we equally inaugurated a post-convention reconciliation committee knowing that definitely there can only be one winner for any given position and that we need to quickly move into reconcile, you know, with uh, any aggrieved, you know, individual as a result of the outcome of the elections. And they've not been sleeping uh, since their inauguration and even since after the declaration of results, I believe uh, the winners and also the committee have been going around uh, meeting the, those who lost out, you know, at the polls or those who withdrew on their own, even before, you know, going through the process. And so I believe as a democratic party, we are used to this. I will follow through, you know, what we, are, what, we, what, what we know best. That is, you know, dialoguing and talking with one another to reconcile and to move forward. Mm. But, you know, there'll be huge questions as to whether or not, you know, when you look at the nature of the grievances, there will be questions as to whether or not the grievances could have been avoided. It's one thing to have people who lose. Of course, they accept that there will be only one winner at the end of the day. But if I lost out fairly, hmm. I mean, if they think that they lost out fairly, don't you think it would have been easier for them to accept? Well, I have to know what, what was unfair in it, you know, for me to answer that specifically. What is the passive unfairness, you know, in the process. Now, have you heard the allegations? I mean, they protest what they term this unity list, which they argue was foisted on delegates. Nobody hosted uh, anything on delegate. Uh, people watch live. No delegate had a list going to the ballot uh, polling unit. Every delegate, you know, had his ballot paper. And at each polling unit, names of those standing for the elections were there. And delegates look at that, you know, and make it made a choice. Uh, now, in politics, you also have consensus building. You, you even before convention did, you had geopolitical zones, states endorsing candidates. So, if geopolitical zone endorses a particular candidate, or a state endorses a particular candidate, they must have consulted with their delegates. So, they must have a rather venue with already a decision as to who and who they are going to vote for. And uh, levels of voters are, is not the same. Some delegates, even though part of a collective decision of a particular area, may, because of the number of people, you understand, uh, lose sight of particular names of individuals, they may seek guidance before the voting starts, you know, from their leaders or other fellow delegates. All this has happened on the, uh, the convention ground. Before the election, people were going around, even against campaigning, going to uh, state boxes, campaigning, and people were changing their minds. So uh, the issue of any particular list uh, may be an issue of a state or a zone who have come to a decision based on uh, their interactions, you know, with the aspirant that this is where we're going. It is interesting at that same list, I mean, from what we hear and from what we can see, uh, the allegations are that that same list eventually became the list of winners. Well, you see, PDP, since it was formed, we, first of all, have been doing zoning and we have been doing consultation. A lot of decisions get taken before you reach convention ground. People are not as rowdy as politicians are not as rowdy as you may think. And that is why the aspirants for offices 
who are going around addressing delegates. And uh, 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 if a state decides, for example, they have a candidate for treasurer, and they meet and decide this is the person we are putting forward as candidate for treasurer, it will not look for another state who has been zoned a particular office. Look, we have a candidate for this office. Who is your candidate? You vote for my candidate, I vote for your candidate. At the end of the day, this horse trading keeps on going. And you know, once you host trade, people who form a common position will now come together and say, okay, fine, you are voting for my candidate, I'm voting for your candidate. You can't stop it. That is political. That is system for vote. That is political. And that's not fraud. But you, if you are unable mm -hmm. to break the rank and win your support, you know, in a particular office, zone to your area, then it is really, really unfortunate because if you can't, you, you don't even have grassroots home support. How do you expect them to have a larger national support? Mm, are you indirectly throwing jobs at the Southwest? 